Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's ACG Investor Day presentation with uh, interesting nanosatellite company from Denmark, Comspace. Today, we have the pleasure of having the CEO, Carsten Drachmann, participating, and he will shortly give an introduction to the Comspace case, after which we have a very quick Q&A. Carsten, with any, without any further ado, thank you very much for being here today, and the word is all yours. Thank you, Benjamin. Okay. God eftermiddag og i, i Stockholm. Ja, og vi skulle jo have det her på, uh, på, på site i Stockholm, men nu bliver det på teamet uh, i stedet. Uh, but I will continue in, uh, in English. I was just showing off that I can also speak some Swedish. Uh, so, uh, welcome to uh, Gumspace. We go to the next presentation. Uh, next slide, thank you. Um, I'll talk about profitability and cash today. Um, but uh, let's go into the agenda. So I'll give you an overview of Gumspace. I'm assuming there are potentially some uh, new uh, new investors here who does know Gumspace. If not those of you who know Gumspace, let's do a little repeat. I'm a big fan of repeating the same information to make sure everybody understands. Towards the end, I will talk about the transformation that we're going through. I'm two months into the job. I want to share with you some strategic anchors, as we call them, uh, that we are focused on for the company, and also a few words on, on next steps. I'm hoping I can keep it to to less than, than 20 minutes, perhaps, and then allow for for Benjamin and others to to ask uh, questions here. But let's get started. So overall, uh, Gum Space, uh, we are we really have a world class uh, experience. Gum Space has been around for for quite some time. Actually, started in the early early days in uh, 2007. Uh, it is one of the um, companies in the world with, with the most uh, experience. We have more than 75 space missions. So we have launched technology with more than uh, 75 uh, different missions. We have more than 1,200 products in space and accumulated scene. If you look at the, our uh, satellites flying that we have built more than 50 years experience in space. And why do I say it like that? What is important in this context? What is important is that uh, it's about having done it in space. Uh, this is really the key driver for uh, winning contracts. It's not enough that you can show, yeah, but you know, we designed it and it should work. We said, well, we designed it and it does work because it's been in space. You can do so and more, so and so much testing on ground, but being in space is important. So for me, this is a key thing. This is the heritage for the company. This is uh, this is the experience we have accumulated, and I'm very much focused on using all of that experience to put the company in a direction where we start uh, using it. You know, you can you can you can go to school for for five years, ten years. You can go to school for twenty five years, but at a point in time, you have to stop going to school. You actually have to start start to use it uh, for something. Uh, so this is very much my focus. A quick brush up. Uh, we'll get back to this uh, also later on. Is that um, uh, we say 150 plus uh, employees right now. Uh, those of you who were paying attention last time, we said 200. Uh, as some of you know, we have gone through and announced uh, last year in the beginning, this, uh, beginning of this year, a reduction in staff. This is being implemented and, and gradually uh, we are we are reducing the amount of, of people that we have in order to, to reduce cost. This is all communicated earlier, just the numbers are, uh, let's say, more correct now. Uh, which uh, another point which is important here is revenue per per region because uh, I'll get back to starting at that. If you look at our revenue today, 77% is from Europe. Or that's from from 2022. Uh, some in Asia, some in US, and some in rest of world. But obviously, the the US market, uh, sorry, the uh, European market is is the most dominant uh, one. Um, okay, next slide. So what do we do? What's our core competences? Um, starting from the left, we do so-called subsystems, which are batteries, battery packs that are needed on a satellite, uh, different kind of antennas, um, different kind of electronics that goes into satellites. And there are, there are specific requirements for this to go into to space. And we have a lot of experience in that and a lot of our, our earnings where we have good earnings is actually in this area. Then there's the so-called payloads. The payload is what the satellite can do. Ground space makes the satellite fly. Uh, we make sure it has solar panels, power, et cetera, but you, got, you, but you want to use it for something. It's sending it up and not using it for anything. It doesn't make any sense, obviously. So it can be uh, communication, data, surveillance of airplanes, surveillance of boats, et cetera. It can be camera, 
for taking pictures of Earth. This is a so-called payload. Uh, I will use the word use case or application here because we'll get back to that. But this is what the satellite can do that adds value. Then we're building platforms. So we take all our subsystems, we take the payloads and we put it together and then it's called a platform. So it's a platform is a satellite that you can send in space. It has power supply, it has uh, solar panels for uh, energy. Uh, it provides an infrastructure for data communication inside the satellites to the payload and the payload is integrated here. So when you put it all together, you call it a platform. That's what we do also. And at last but not least, uh, once it's flying, you need to talk to it. So uh, you have to actually be able to send it up. You have to give it some, uh, uh, some signals on what to do. You want to download data. You may want to configure it. You want to monitor the health of the satellite, etc. cetera. So these, uh, that's the so-called constellation management. Uh, and it's not just for what you do with the payload, uh, the data download, the picture download, but it's also making sure that a satellite is, is working. Um, interesting thing on that is that when you send up the satellite, uh, you can see on the platform, the first picture, it has like these arms sticking out. Those are the solar panels. It could also be an antenna that's fairly long. When you send it up, it has to be really compact when it's sitting on a rocket. So when SpaceX is launching, it's very, it's very compact. It's all folded together like a Japanese uh, origami. Uh, and then it's up there and it's flying. And then we send a signal and say unfold. And then it's opening up the solar panels. And actually, that's not necessarily a reverse boat process. Once it's released, it's opened and then it's flying as it should. That's where the constellation management comes in as, as well. Okay, let's move on. Um, what are we focusing on? Uh, it's very much about coming to a, a standard platform. So we're, we're focusing on building standard interfaces, a standard platform so that we can use uh, our satellites for many different things. We have a faster time to market. Uh, we, only can, uh, we only need to do smaller modifications in order to implement a new uh, customer requirement, for example, or a new requirement for a special service. So we are working towards that. There are some examples uh, examples at the bottom here. Signal intelligence, which is about monitoring radio frequencies on, on the ground. You can monitor ships or walkie-talkies or other things. Atmospheric monitoring, monitoring of ships, aviation. You can actually uh, track and, and talk to uh, uh, airplanes. Remember, some airplanes have disappeared in, in, in Asia and also off the coast of, of Brazil. Uh, we don't know where they were, they just disappeared. With this technology, you can actually continue to talk to them and track. Uh, and there are other applications. And I use here the word applications or use case. We'll get back to that as well. But these are typically use cases. Like I say, it's not just flying the satellite in itself. It's somewhat boring. It has to do something. These are examples of what we can do. Okay, next. Some examples, uh, some of you have seen them before. They're still all super exciting. We have a, a platform in uh, Colombia uh, with the Colombia, uh, Colombian government. It's actually flying. We launched it on, uh, I believe it was May or end of April. Uh, so it's up and flying. It's actually working. We have contact with a satellite and it starts to do what it is intended to do. We have Unseen Labs, which is our long and uh, very loyal and very dear customer from, from France. We actually, we, we grew up together when Gump Space was an early day startup, so was Unseen Labs. So we've grown up together. We have built all their platforms uh, so far. Uh, we have launched nine satellites with them and we have plans to, to launch another uh, six or eight, I believe. Um, so uh, this, is, uh, this is a working uh, system that is actually surveilling uh, fishing boats. Uh, and when the fishing boats turn off their positioning because they want to cheat and go and fish in waters where they're not supposed to fish, for example, a British boat in the French waters, we can still see them and Unseen Labs can still see them. So we, we know where they are, even though they're trying to do something they're not supposed to do. That has a quite high value for the, for the French government. Then we have European Space Agency, a couple of cool uh, missions we are building. Uh, right now we're working uh, on uh, something called QMAP which is about uh, uh, weather uh, monitoring and some scientific equipment. We're also working on something called Juventus, which is about um, going into deep space and, uh, and monitoring and observing uh, meteorites uh, and, and trying to do some experiments with those, uh, with those, um, on those uh, meteorites to understand how they impact uh, the Earth and what we can do. Uh, 
So these are pretty, pretty cool uh, uh, examples. Before moving on, just checking, uh, it's quite blurry on my screen. So, uh, Benjamin, I mean, are you seeing it clearly on your screen? So maybe it's just mine. You see it clear. Okay, good. Just want to make sure people can read it. Okay, so this was an overview of um, uh, of of Gum Space. A very quick uh, walkthrough. Uh, if we go to the next slide. So focus. So as I said, I've been here for, uh, about two months, a bit more than two months now, working with the organization. I started out by uh, giving you some ideas and intro to how I see the world, the business. I've been in in in, in satcom and satellite communication for some time. I uh, also talk about clarity and communication. So I want to continue to execute on that. So if you jump to the first uh, slide, on next slide. So first, a recap. You have seen this before. Uh, like I have said, technology and people check. Yes. Growing market. Yes. Check. Good. Global brand. Absolutely. Yes. Check. Good. Customer evolution. Yes. Check. Good. We see an evolution from space agencies and governments doing experiment because they can and they can use taxpayer money to do something towards more commercial uh, launch of satellites in this uh, low orbit satellite space. I should say that that's where we are. Um, so commercial and we see more and more also government and defense applications around monitoring the sovereign state. For example, the fishing boats is an example of we want to know where all the boats are. Um, and that goes in many, many parts of the world where there's a lot of, if you imagine countries with a lot of ship uh, uh, traffic in and out, this is something that needs to be monitored and it's not easy and it's not easy. So, so there we see an, an evolution of customers and use cases, like I said before, use cases that are, are helpful and, and are meaningful to, to either governments or commercial customers. If you look at the financials, okay, we've had a, a, a decent growth, I would say 24% over six years, KGAR. Uh, haven't really made much money uh, so far, a little bit in the beginning. Last year wasn't good for a number of reasons. So don't want to go back to that. But th this is sort of the picture of the financials. So it's been a lot of focus on, on the top line and then profitability has been um, perhaps uh, lacking a bit. Like I have said earlier, it's okay as a, as a technology and startup company that, yeah, you're not expected to make money in the beginning. You need to Build your technology, you need to get customers, you need to find your place. But obviously, at a point in time, you also need to start understanding how do you turn all the learning, like I said, into something useful uh, and something meaningful that we can make money on. Okay, let's move to the next one. So what are we going to do? Well, we have defined four, I call them strategic anchors. So looking at how... Um, what is our guidance for the transformation that I want to take uh, the company through? And I'll read through them one by one and explain. First of all, more focus on repeatable business models and match matching our strengths. What does it mean? It means rather than always taking one-offs and, and always trying something new, we want to start focusing more on something that's more repeatable, so it's more predictable, it's lower risk, and uh, there is, uh, to the extent possible, have more recurring revenue. So that's one thing. And we need to focus on where we are uh, strongest. So we start need to start leveraging and focusing on, on where we have some, some strong areas and there are some pro our product portfolio where we are uh, quite strong and we need to, to focus on that. We need to use all our experience as I've highlighted on the right. Um, we will, uh, as a strategic anchor, we'll strengthen our product business. Uh, why do we do that? Well, because there is a market, a growing market. This is also where we have uh, good uh, profitability. We have good contribution margin on products. And every time we sell products, we don't need to tie a lot of people behind it. Of course, we have a production. Uh, we have salespeople, but we do not have to uh, set up a whole project uh, with a lot of people when selling products. So the fastest time to more profitable business uh, process way is through uh, product business. Um, we will increase, uh, have more increased focus on market needs and use cases. So rather than running for perhaps uh, technology or requirements, we will start focusing on a couple of areas where we see a need. I mentioned one, which is uh, monitoring of, of uh, ships or uh, rather radio signals, uh, radio frequencies on ground. And it can be anything, it can be a radar, it can be a walkie-talkie, it could be a cell phone even, we can see that. 
So increased focus on uh, market needs and market developments uh, so that we start preparing and selecting a couple of areas where we are good and, and we want to be even better and the best. Uh, bullet number four, a strategic anchor is great leverage for our business, uh, meaning more partnering. So we, we are, are it's been a tendency and it's also quite normal in, in this kind of uh, company to we do everything ourselves. We, we need to move towards uh, doing what we're really good at and be better at it and other areas we want to partner and can be partner for technology, subsystems. It can also be partnering in how we go to market. I can highlight here a, a contract with SAIC in the US that we have announced earlier. So this is an example, uh, but we also want to partner more on the technology and in uh, in delivering of, uh, of, uh, of projects. All of these strategic angers is based on, again, world-class experience, it's a global brand. We have so much knowledge, we have so much technology. We need to start packaging into something where we can uh, create better business out of it. And with that, uh, going to the next steps, uh, the next slide. So next steps, it's a transformation, first of all, David means it's not bam, it's all done. It is, it is a process we're going through. I have worked a lot with uh, the organization internally. We have analyzed our sales pipelines. We have looked at our project portfolio. We looked at our competences. And we are talking through and understanding together how we, we do this. And it's very important for me to say we do it together on how we do it. It is not me coming in and making, hey, here's a big change, everybody do that. We actually work very well together now. We started a range of transformation teams and the essence and summary of that, uh, uh, what we're going to do uh, in the next steps is, as I mentioned, increase product business. Why? Because we have a strong contribution margin here. Uh, it's the fastest time to growing a little bit of top line, but certainly bottom line. Uh, so here concretely, we will actually do, we will invest in more salespeople. We are, we are already in the process of hiring one, maybe two. Uh, to strengthen our product business. And we will also have more focus on a more continuous development of our product portfolio. Uh, number two is focus on project profitability. So we really need to um, uh, have more profitable projects, which means we need to be better at estimating them. We need to be better doing risk management. And it is uh, no longer uh, revenue and top line at any cost. Yes, it's early days. You take you take uh, big projects. You want to have uh, more bigger programs. You take it at a higher risk than you maybe normally would. But but in an early days of a company, that's what you do, and it's okay. We've been through that, and now we'll focus more on we'll take the projects that we are comfortable with, and that where we have a decent profitability. And on that note, I want to say we we are comfortable with many projects. We are actually quite good at this. Uh, but we will also be a little bit more critical on what's the best fit, and we're going to go more to market and say, this is what we're good at. Where, 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 who, who can actually benefit from this? So uh, more focus on the profitability in everything we do, and you can see the priority. I say profitability and cash first. I think before it's probably what you've seen: it's revenue and top line. Just grow, grow, grow. No, profitability and cash first uh, is my priority. Uh, bullet number three is expanding in North America. This is, uh, in my in my opinion, the the fastest route to a bigger revenue um, with profitability. So a lot of it will be product sales. I don't foresee making big projects, and we will do that together with uh, some existing customers we have there. But certainly SAIC, mentioning them again, we are working through that MOU that we have uh, we have already announced and working on building up uh, a portfolio uh, of customers and a, and, a, and a stronger base in North America. It's more than half of the global accessible market, so it's a no-brainer from that perspective. It's actually more than 60% of the global market that we have accessible to us is North America. So investing there uh, some, somehow makes sense. Um, and by having increased uh, efforts, uh, the way they say it in America, more, more boots on the ground, so putting more people in place to work with SAIC and support the market. That's what we will do. Um, so these are our three uh, priorities uh, that I want to put forward right now. As I said, it is a transformation. So now we are setting that up for the organization. We start working with how do we make, uh, get a better project profitability and how do we increase uh, the product business? Okay. And uh, yeah, 
we go to the last slide, but this uh, is pretty much what I have. The last slide will say clarity and communication. So I hope I hope I put some more uh, clarity into what we are doing, and uh, certainly I I continue my communication. And you have your, we have a Q1 report coming up on Friday as well as you know, so there will be more um, information coming there as well. Thank you very much, Kathy. The thorough walkthrough of the company. We'll start off the Q and A session. Fundamental in the company now associated. I'm sorry, Benjamin, but you are very uh, much breaking out. It's very hard to hear you. Sorry, Kathy. I hope this is better now. Um, looking at the fundamentals which are in place for the company, we do know that the technology is there. We do know that the people is there. That the market is growing. But could you just give us an update on how this new interest environment has potentially impacted or fueled some of the interest into the investment of your space? Have there been any changes uh, within the last 12 months? And so a lot of the questions that we do get is how risky or how certain is the continued new investment? In okay. So, uh, so you ask about, uh, I think, uh, um, how is the market developing and uh, what is the certainty for investing in Comspace? First of all, I'm not going to comment as such on uh, investing in Comspace. I think you know, you, people need to <laughs> uh, decide on that for themselves. Uh, the market continues to grow, as I have uh, I have shown. Uh, we do see more and more demand. We see more uh, requests from government, uh, defense. Uh, we also see more commercial uh, customers coming up. So I would say uh, this is all fine. Uh, it's more a question of uh, how we approach it. Uh, we have been honest, as I said, there's been some hiccups in the past. And I believe what I have outlined here should be able to bring us on, a, uh, let's say, more stable path towards a more uh, stable financial situation. And then from that situation, we can continue to grow more. I don't think there is any, there's no uncertainty in the in a market as such, and there is a market, absolutely not. Uh, but like I, I believe I've said earlier, is we still need to, in the end, somebody has to pay for all of this. So the business cases needs to make sense. And that's still an involving market. Who, who, who are the end users that are willing to pay some money for a service, monitoring of fishing boats, um, uh, taking pictures of, of Earth and, and doing data processing and picture processing, et cetera. That is still evolving, but uh, is the market growing? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kathy. The next question is regarding your North American aspirations. So you are already present in North America. You have been there for many years. Now you are speaking about sort of gaining more momentum in this market with product sales. Um, given your very strong brand and also knowledge of gum space within this industry. How quickly would you expect there to be a material ramp up in sales in North America? Mm. Uh, I would say uh, within, um, it, it is a big market and we only have a very small market share and, and you, you can, every, every time you do something in Europe, you can multiply by five in, in, in the US. It's just, it's just so much bigger. And I think I believe together with SAIC opening it up of that market, and we also do have a lot of uh, direct sales. And by placing a simply, it's very, it's a very simple equation. We simply put in more salespeople, and we put in uh, potentially also some system engineers to support sales or sales support engineers. I believe that it, within the next 12 months, uh, hopefully sooner, we will be able to see some level of of growth from that. It's and I purely based that on uh, the dynamic I see in the market, the size of the market. And then leaning uh, against uh, SAIC for for uh, let's say uh, market presence will will help us as well. So I have no reason to believe that it's not going to pay off to to focus here. Thank you, Kathy. Um, the last bigger question is: given the fact you now been during the company for for quite some time, you've gotten to see the company through a capital mission as well, um, and you are slowly starting to land. I I imagine. Um, where are you currently seeing the biggest opportunity for Gumspace, which were maybe not as focused on the past? Product sales. Product sales. Yeah. Product sales. Absolutely, product sales. There is. Um, uh, we can capture a bigger market, and uh, we have uh, taken in many projects. And those projects have some of them have been good, and and many of them are good. Uh, uh, but by focusing more on product sales, like I said, we have a very uh, relatively good contribution margin on that. 
Uh, so selling there doesn't require a lot of effort after what you need to produce, you need to deliver, it needs to work, but you don't, you're not tying a lot of uh, business after that. So I think that's something that uh, I like to say is, is some, uh, somewhat a change and also more focus on, on that. I would say the other opportunity is to uh, simply uh, uh, focus on more profitable projects. The opportunity is already in front of them. It's about uh, uh, taking more profitable projects and taking something that we, uh, we are better at controlling. Thank you very much, Carsten. I appreciate it. We have time has to conclude the call here. But again, thank you so much for participating today. And thank you to everybody who listened in on the call as well. Hope you all have a good day. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.